nothing at all. Nothing. They've never had antibiotics, nothing. The oldest two have had Tylenol one time. Uh, okay, so one dose of Tylenol each. Other than that, absolutely. Everything else is herbal, homeopathic, essential you, oils, stuff like that. Do you hear that, people? We start the day off with this and very, all very... all of them have had chicken pox. You've all had chicken pox? And they're alive. You are alive and you're healthy. Look at this little girl's face. She's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Okay, so please tell us. We, we all really want to know. What possessed you guys not to vaccinate your children? First-hand experience. I worked in a clinic. You work in a clinic? I worked before he was born. I worked in a medical office, a uh, family practice, and um, well, part of my stop. job was giving immunizations. So you used to give immunizations I to given children? Hundreds of immunizations. You've given hundreds of immunizations. So what was your job description? What were you? Um, I'm a CMA, certified medical assistant, is what my job is. Um, I would, in the clinical setting, people would call me the doctor's nurse. Um, I would call people back, take their blood pressure, draw blood, stuff like that, um, and then also do immunizations. So, and did you ever read the inserts of these? I did. So you actually read them and you yes. knew what you were giving when you gave them? Um, after a time. At first I did not, but after a time, yes, I did. I was very, very aware and tried the best I could without losing my job to make parents aware of what was in them and that it didn't need to be given um and it was really saddening and eye-opening the number of people that didn't care the doctor said it was okay so we do it so the number of people that just literally trusted the doctor said we need to do it the doctor said it's safe they didn't i mean so no one ever asked to see a vaccine insert they, they had we had these forms that we handed out that were from the cdc and 90 percent of the time parents didn't even take them home or read them or anything they just complete trust on the doctor. So what happened to you to make you think that vaccines were a problem? Um, well, I we had some friends that didn't vaccinate and I was like, hmm, that's odd. And I was like, well, Hang on a minute, guys. We're going to, tell you what, we're going we're gonna to put this down. One second, everybody. This is a blanket that's going to take that noise away because people can't hear. Put your, put your toys on there. Imagine that's a big field. It's a bit wet there. All right, now we're going. Okay, sorry. So these friends of ours didn't vaccinate. Um, it made me start thinking, hmm, I've, I've always been told vaccines are safe and you know, needed and you know, had very, very limited education on them in school. It was I mean, maybe 10 minutes of a class. And uh, so I started you know, just doing some of my own research and realizing you know, these just aren't ingredients, things that I want put in my body. So at that point, I stopped vaccinating like as far as myself. Like I got a flu shot one year, but I haven't had an immunization for many, many years. Um, but yeah, I just stopped. I was like, this isn't something I want to do. And I knew at that point when I had kids that I wasn't going to vaccinate. Um, so when he was born, we declined everything and, uh, I've never had any issues. Just... So did you give birth to your first child in hospital? I did. We yeah. transferred to the hospital after a lot of hours of home labor. He was supposed to be a home birth, but he just didn't want to be born. <laughs> and did you get pushback there? for having vitamin K and hep B and things. Vitamin K, absolutely. Um, they tried to tell us that if we got in a car accident on our way home that he was going to die. Um, Bizarre things no, no actual like thinking and thought process as to why a newborn is born with low vitamin K. And what happens when you up that synthetically, like, you know, there's just no, they don't think about it. They just, oh, he needs a vitamin K shot. And it's like, no, he does not. So no, none of them have ever had anything. But yes, they absolutely, the pediatrician tried to scare us into thinking that he, he would die if he didn't get the vitamin K. And do you still go to a pediatrician with your fall? No, you just stay away. We what? go to a chiropractor. Yeah. If we needed something, we would go to urgent care or the ER. But no, there's just, we've done a couple like well child visits, like just to, you know, be a good mom or whatever. But it was just, there's a, so much pushback to get vaccinated. And it's just like, I'm not interested in explaining well, to everybody. It is a truly lack of need too. Yeah, they I don't mean, need we, we to don't, go. Or they aren't so sick. well child visits, um, I know this from uh, doing guess, them. They're, they're an immunization schedule visit is what they are. If there's something wrong with your kid, you're going to notice it long before any doctor does. Are you both frightened of um, measles, mumps, about all these childhood illnesses that my generation used to get? Not at all. Not in the slightest bit. No. If 
if I could find measles, I would probably, I've traveled to get chicken pox for the kids, so I would probably travel to, to get measles for them, because there's a reason our bodies get it, and there's things that we know that it helps our bodies, you know, it helps our, learn, our immune systems learn. And how were they when they had chicken pox? How ill did they get? They had a low grade fever and they were covered in spots. I wouldn't describe it as fun, but they thought it was fun because they got to watch movies and stuff like that. So they, they, you, you didn't, it wasn't life threatening to your children? Oh no. And he was absolutely covered. He had easily 300 spots. He was absolutely covered. The worst part for him was it was in his diaper area and he's in a diaper still. So it's like, that can't feel good to sit to sit on those spots but no he slept fine everybody napped fine it was not a big deal at all interesting so can you describe your children's um health and their mental ability i mean i've had a lot of questions you know when i when i interview the vaccinated kids they have a lot of ear infections no we've never had an ear infection um they bang their heads a lot some high-pitched screams with arching backs, thrashing. No. No. Um, yeah. Never really experienced the purple crying that they talk about. Mm -mm, no, they've. No, we've never had anything. We've never. We've never needed a doctor. What about allergies? Nope. No I allergies. No I haven't. But well, you've been vaccinated. Fully. More than fully. I actually have had three chickenpox vaccines. Allergies. And I still got chicken pox when the oldest two got it. You had three chicken pox vaccines. Why on earth? So when I went into the medical field, they check your titers. And my titers showed that I had no immunity to it. So the two that I had gotten didn't work. So they called the CDC. And at this point, I wasn't of the mindset I am now. So I got vaccinated again because that's what the CDC said to do. And they redrew titers after another six months. And there was still nothing. So I knew that I didn't have titers to it. So I knew that there was a possibility I would get it. And I absolutely did when they got it. So three chicken pox vaccines, and, and you still got chicken pox. He just banged his head. Give that back to him. Give that back And so you you used to give. This is a fascinating story. You, the mum, used to give vaccinations. You've given hundreds, hundreds of vaccinations. And you worked out yourself that this was not what you wanted for your children. Do you still give vaccines? No, I stopped working when he was born. I I stay home full time. And did you regret not vaccinating your children? No. Oof. Absolutely no, not. There's been no negative side effects. They're all very healthy. Um, None of them have health issues. He had really bad asthma as a kid. None of them have asthma. We have no health issues. Who had asthma as a kid? You. Yep. But, and have you been vaccinated? Yep. Yep. I don't, I mean, I, I don't know the uh, extent of whatever I was given as a child, but um, I know that I was, I know that I was yeah. vaccinated the regular whatever they were giving at the time. Yep. This is quite incredible. I mean, it's just night and day, isn't it? Yeah. When I look back and growing up, I had, they diagnosed it as GERD. I was on super high doses. I mean, like we're talking at 11, 12. I was on super high doses of like over the counter. It's now over the counter. It was prescription then, like acid reflux medication. They did scans and never found anything out. The only thing that finally got it to go away was when I got older and we got married um, and I clean, cleaned up my diet and stopped getting immunizations, you know, and I don't have any GI issues anymore at all. None of us take any medications at all, other than just supplements. You eat well? Yes, we eat all our day. I mean, there's not much to say, really, is it? Four ex incredibly healthy children. Go, uh, children, can you show us your T-shirts? Everybody wants to see your T-shirts. Look at that. Children's Vax T-shirts made by I do not know who. <laughs> but these are so cool. Yeah, it's kind of boring. We don't have anything to uh, it's not, it's, to, isn't, to, it's, to, 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 to it's say all the, all the issues, you know, we, you know. This and that and the other was just, uh, they were born and we've been, we've been blessed in many ways for sure. Um, but we just, uh, like I said, I mean, if there was a medical emergency, we would consult um, uh, the experts and physicians who were able to, you know, um, do operations and, I mean, so it's not, it's just really, truly a lack of need. Um, they're just, they're just healthy. There's not really a need to go. We 
try to feed them well and so you're the I'm eldest asleep. he's the eldest how old yes. is he he's almost six almost six because you have a lot of children and young yeah i think that's the way to do it by the way just <laughs> fyi string yeah. them together he's, string them together. he's almost six she just turned four and she's almost three and he's 14 months it's so lovely for me to sit here and speak to a family because of house because it, it's the same story with the unvaccinated everywhere we go you've seen the stories they're exactly the same and you just are another family with the same issues and any parent that's watching this or has been watching these videos has to no matter whether you have a scientific background i mean it is what it is it just makes sense i mean you wouldn't one. Drink formaldehyde or inject it any other way, or you know, aluminum. One, two, I mean, if you three, injected those into your kid any other way, you'd you know you'd get your kids taken away. But yeah, for some reason, when it's done in a doctor's office, it's okay. That's doesn't make sense. What do you think? What do you parents think about? I I don't know if you have mainstream news, but if you did turn on the mainstream news, there's advertisement after advertisement of getting this vaccine or drugs or. Um, you know, give your children Peter Shaw. I mean, it's. I'm shocked. I've, I we don't have this at so home, but I'm in hotels right now, and I'm watching, yeah. and I'm horrified. It is horrifying. What What do you think when doctors come on TV and say vaccines are safe and effective, and people who don't vaccinate like you guys, you're gonna kill everybody else? Type of thing. You know, I don't well, want to say this in front of I your kids, but you sure know the they deal. They just got paid to say it because I worked in I worked in clinics. I saw drug reps come in, push their drugs, push their vaccine, and the doctors, you know, if they push it, then they get paid for it. Um, I was there, I actually was in the clinical setting at the introduction of the Gardasil vaccine, and everybody thought I should get it and stuff, and I never got it. Um, but I can firsthand tell you 100% of the doctor's knowledge comes from the drug rep who's selling the product. Did you hear that, people? 100% that of the drug's those. reps, not, not, the doctor's knowledge comes from the drug reps. See, that's it. They come in with pamphlets and they hand them to the doctor and they, at the same time, feed them lunch. They cater in a meal and they feed them and they give them all their knowledge about the vaccine. That was, that's where their education came from. It did not come from any, you know, actual articles or anything like that. I mean, unless they went and did that on their own. Their education came solely from the drug reps who were trying to sell. And nine times out of ten, the qualifications of a drug rep are... Pretty face. Pretty sadly. sad. Um, I mean, there's some that have an education, but I mean, not that we most of, care some about are education. RNs, but I mean, I've met one that was a meteorologist. And it's like, how does that qualify you to sell pharmaceuticals? I'm not sure, but you know, I mean, no, it's, there's no specific education. Mainly they're looking for somebody who's, you know, friendly and, you know, a, a pretty face to sell. I've never met a drug rep who wasn't beautiful. Right, that's interesting. <laughs> they're always isn't it? really beautiful people and they're very friendly. <laughs> um, now tell us about your family behind. Um, this is my mom right here. <laughs> Hello, mama. And she is an RN. You're a nurse. She wow. Worked in a pediatric Still a nurse. Clinic. Still go out and work. I'm not working currently, but I was an OB for 20 years, and I worked in pediatrics and gave thousands of immunizations myself, working as a ped nurse. So did you hear that, peeps? She worked as a ped nurse, giving thousands of immunizations. Wow, and your family's pretty. Is this all of your family here? No, I have an older daughter. But this is all your grandkids. Oh, but it's all my grandkids. All your grandchildren here. Does have any of your grandchildren had any vaccines? No, all no the one. grandchildren are no vitamin K, nothing. Yeah, nothing. And how do you feel about that as a? I love it. You love, I love it? it? Yeah. Because they're so healthy. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Yep. I wish I'd have known what I know now back then. We all do. Mm -hmm. It's criminal, guys. It's criminal. And you, I know the sisters don't particularly want to be on camera, but just shout out. Are you guys happy with your decision not to vaccinate? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, they say. Oh, yes. And they do have very, very handsome, healthy children. I really, it's really difficult to know what to say about all this because it's so stark, isn't it? The difference. The difference. And I'm sure today as we go to our interviews, we will have injured children. And you will, you will see, and these people on here know, by the way, they're sending you lots of love, all of you. They love you guys. And the fact that you and your mum worked. We actually worked in the same clinic for and a you, while. You worked same in the same clinic, clinic and you both gave immunizations and you 
then go on to through your knowledge not vaccinate your family so that says it all peeps wow anybody got any questions here on social media for our peeps these healthy children I'm not even going to ask that question. You know, I mean, come on, guys. Uh, is, there, all right, is there anything that would make you vaccinate your children? Is there any plague? Yes, if smallpox absolutely. came back, if polio, herd immunity, all those usual... If Andrew was in found, jail, you health know, health whatever is, it is. Health is not found in a vaccine. It's found in a healthy immune system, which is forged through a healthy diet and a healthy lifestyle. Did you hear that? You're not going to find it in a needle. There's no quick fix. It doesn't work that way. This family have worked it out on their own. They've worked in the industry. They've worked it out. Did you... Okay, okay. They want to know if either you two, when you gave vaccines, did you see any adverse effects? Yes. You both did. Mm -hmm. Had to do VAERS reports. So m the mum is saying she had to do VAERS reports on the, these... Yeah, that's sad. Mm -hmm. That's really sad. sad. Yeah. Yes. But it was always fun to have the under-the-table conversation with parents behind the closed door when I'm the only one in the room. Right, so helping for give parents that are knowledge. on the fence, they don't really want to do it, but are feeling pressured, and so it's always yes. nice to be able to have that opportunity to tell them it's. And we're so grateful to nurses like you because we hear do hear from parents when they come and do their stories that there was this one nurse that took them aside or whispered to them, "Go see the insert, do your work, come back, yeah. leave now." Yep. So we're really grateful to you, to you guys doing that. And your children are just, I just could keep the cameras on your children the whole day. <laughs> they, they, their eyes are central, guys. There's no wonky eyes here. Everybody is healthy. Um, on the ball, alert. They answer to their name. It's sad, really, that I'm having, having to say this. Yeah, it really is. No, it's sad that never having antibiotics, never needing, you know, over-the-counter medications, stuff like that is not normal you know it's sad that that shocks people that they've never had an ear infection no not one and and the and the old line of unvaccinated are a danger to society i mean that is a classic isn't it that didn't come up actually you're doing okay you had the few i see you don't have too many they always feel try to make us feel like the burden of proof is on us to as far as like why don't you why won't you you know as far as you know the burden of proof is should be on the person who is wanting to inject a child with a foreign substance um and if you, you know i feel like if you can't convince me of that then that should be good enough for you um you know but they always pressure pressure the unvaccinated person to try and make it seem like the burden of proof is on them of for why they don't want their babies to be injected with these foreign substances before they even you know hardly even got to know who their mom and dad are you know um, it's just interesting well for me personally your stories help enormously because as much as i sit here I'm totally regretting giving my three children any vaccines it, it validates for me everything everything's very very important and i'm really grateful because you guys do not need you don't have to sit here and do this you could just carry on with your great life with your healthy children but you're doing it for the future and for that we're extremely grateful see that unvaccinated children are completely healthy there's no no there's no issues here there's they're no not, issues they're not walking around carrying diseases they're not you know neglected they're not you know they're healthy they're happy they and our people are just too. saying that they're very grateful to you too because you know this is we all wish we'd taken this route but it's something I'm very, very grateful for that we do not have to look back with regret. Um, yeah, there's no regret. There's no looking back going, I wish we hadn't vaccinated or whatever. I'm glad I had the knowledge at the time to make the decision. When you watch these videos that we do around the, around the world, really, how do you feel when you see the story of the four months old that died following vaccines? The, the, that is fun. Yeah. And honestly, it's made me... Um, for many years, I wasn't very vocal about it, but it's made me very vocal. Because so many of the stories are, I never knew, no one told me to question it. And so now it's like, I wear my back shirts all the time. I post stuff on social media, you know, like I just challenge people to think about it. You know, I, I want them, I don't want them to be able to say, I never heard anybody question the safety of vaccines. 
So I'm putting that out there for people so that the people in my circle at least know, hey, you need to question it. I am. And, and if you why. if your children got measles, um, would you take them out into society or would you keep them at home? I would keep them at home. Um, I feel like it's a personal choice of ours not to vaccinate. And to push that on other people is just not not right. Um, but uh, no, we would stay home. And especially, I mean, there is immun immunocompromised people out there. Um, we have a friend who just had a heart no. transplant and, you know, she can't be around stuff like that. So, yeah, I, absolutely. If my kids are sick, we stay home. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I would honestly like for them to get the measles because then they'd be protected from that and not have an issue with it. But, uh, no, if we got it, we would stay home. That was probably the worst part about the chicken pox was we had to stay home. They wanted to go somewhere so bad. <laughs> They're like, can we go to the store? No, we can't, guys. Sorry. So, that was probably the worst part about the chicken pox. That's funny. Well, I think it's wonderful that you've had, you've got these wonderful, healthy children, and you are a, a wonderful family. Behind these people are more of this extended family with their beautiful children. Um, all of this family look healthy, grandchildren, and um, young. Gosh, I don't know what is it because I'm getting so old. You guys all look so young. But um, and thank you for allowing us to be here. These guys host us here with our stories, and we're so grateful to you and I am working on these guys being hosts for this area to continue the vaxxed, unvaxxed mm -hmm. stories um, yes. around the world alright, everybody want to say bye bye, bye. 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 look bye. at this healthy bye. family alright, okay that's a good one to start on mm. awesome. bye. bye right now, um, how do I finish